Good day everybody. I know that you have finished finally uh, writing your physical science um, uh, for this year and I just thought that I would use this time to actually just uh, talk about you know the exam that you wrote uh, just to look through the questions and please if um, this is actually uh, uh, the purpose of it is not to stress you out in any way uh, as you compare your answers but it's so that we continue to look at you know just the solutions and how to approach questions um, so for those of you who haven't subscribed hey please just uh, join part of the family I know we've come to the end of the year um, but uh, of course uh, for those of you who also uh, would still like some assistance especially for those who are still writing the IEB exam uh, I know that they still have paper two uh, to contend with uh, they can also get in touch with me and uh, our email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za all right so let's look at uh, our november 2021 paper okay uh, i know that you will thoroughly enjoy these sessions as you look through these questions and as i said please do not stress under any circumstances let's look at it together so the very first question we're starting with the multiple choice okay so the very first question that they give us uh, they say consider the statement below the perpendicular force exerted by a surface on an, on an object in contact with the surface of course uh, they say which one of the following uh, forces is defined by the statement above and of course this is going to be our normal force right so that's the definition i won't stay much on that one so um, obviously 1.1 would be the normal force so let's write that down there so a 1.1 is simply the answer is a okay uh, couldn't be better than that right the first answer is a they say two balls of masses m and m and 2m are dropped simultaneously and uh, please just note there they did say that they are dropped and uh, simultaneously from the same height okay uh, above the ground they say ignore uh, air resistance okay so in this case we know that they would be moving uh, under you know uh, 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 free fall or in this case they are under projectile motion right vertical projectile motion so we s they say when the balls strike the ground which one of the following physical quantities will be the same for both balls and uh, the correct answer there should be b their velocity now uh, remember that any of the projectile motion equations does not depend on mass now if you look at weight weight depends on mass okay momentum has mass in it uh, kinetic energy has mass in it so the only thing that will be uh, the same would actually be the velocity okay so that's our answer for 1.2 right uh, question 1.3 says the graph below shows how the momentum of an object changes with time okay they say during one during which one rather of the following time intervals measured in seconds is the magnitude of the net force acting on the object the greatest of course we do know in this case uh, so we've got momentum against time so how would we measure the net force remember that you know if you take the momentum impulse equation it simply says f net uh, is equal to change in momentum divided by change in time of course this is after we've uh, sort of uh, adapted this equation a little bit uh, uh, just by making net force the you know the the subject of the formula of course in its original form uh, it says f net change multiplied by change in time which is the impulse is simply equal to the change in momentum right so of course if we divide both sides by change in time uh, what we do get is that now that means if we take the gradient okay remember you say change in y what is y that's momentum divided by change in x which is change in time so the gradient underneath this graph is actually uh, the net force so in this case they say which one of the intervals uh, following time intervals measured in seconds is the magnitude of the net force 
um, of the object the greatest. Of course, in this case, where do we have the greatest um, gradient? Uh, of course, it's between uh, period 3 to 4. So that's 3 to 4 seconds, right? So, uh, sorry, that's 1.3. Uh, so for 1.3, it means our answer will be D, 1 point, uh, rather 3 to 4 seconds. All right, as we move on to the next one, I'm just going to pull that up a little bit so that you can see the rest of it. They say a ball is dropped from a height above a floor. Right, they say the ball makes an elastic collision. That's very important. It means there's no loss in energy there, uh, kinetic energy in particular, uh, with the flow at time t0 and bounces vertically upwards. Right, they say ignore air resistance. All right, so there's no applied force, there's no frictional force. So it simply means that mechanical energy is conserved, right? They say, which one of the following graphs shows how the total mechanical energy of the ball changes with time? Now, remember, what do we say? What's the principle of conservation of uh, mechanical energy? It says in an isolated system, which one, which this is, by the way, uh, because there's no air resistance and there's no applied force, right? Uh, it simply says in an isolated system, the total mechanical energy remains the same. So where does mechanical energy remain the same? Of course, our answer there should be B, all right? Uh, because it tells us that mechanical energy does not change. It remains constant, okay? So I hope that makes sense as we move along to the next question. Okay, so the next question says, consider the spectrum diagram below. Uh, so they give us diagram 1 and diagram 2. Now if you'd note there for diagram 1, you can see you've got those spectral lines there. Uh, but when you look at diagram 2, they seem to have shifted. And by the way, they are shifting towards the red, right? So this would be what you call a red shift. Okay. They say, um, uh, and by the way, just uh, to explain this before, uh, remember a, a red shift indicates that we are moving towards the lower frequencies and lower frequencies tell us that actually something is moving away from us, right? So in this case, we simply uh, are going to, we know that for diagram two, um, if it's something that's moving, then it's moved away from us or we are moving away from it, okay? Now they say diagram one represents the spectrum of an element in a laboratory on Earth. So you're looking at an element on Earth and then diagram two represents the spectrum of the same element from a distant star as observed from the Earth, right? So you're looking at this distant star, it's got the same element, but you, you, you notice that uh, the spectral lines are shifted, uh, in this case, more towards the red. What does that say to us? They say which one of the following can be deduced from the spectra above? So it means that that star, okay, must therefore be moving away because it's moving towards uh, the lower frequencies. So uh, the correct answer, they say the star is moving towards Earth. Nope. The star is, is at rest. The star is moving away from the Earth. So in this case, uh, for 1.5, uh, the correct one is um, C. Okay. And let's look at 1.6. Okay, so they give us a diagram there. They say the diagram below shows the field lines of the combined electric field due to small charged uh, uh, spheres P and Q. All right, of course, I did go through this uh, in my for electrostatics just to show you how to construct those diagram, your field line diagrams. They say which one of the combinations below correctly shows the polarity of spheres P and Q, okay? Now, if you notice there, for sphere P, you can see that they are actually, the field lines are moving out. Now, remember, the field lines uh, represent what we call a positive test charge. It means if I place a positive test charge there, it would actually be repelled. So that means P should be positive, right? And then on Q, you can see both of them are actually attracting each other. 
uh, but at Q, in this case, those field lines are moving towards the center of Q. So in this case, if you think of a positive test charge, you're saying it would move towards. So in this case, it, it would mean it would be attracted. So it means P is positive and Q should be negative. So let's see there. Uh, they say which one of the combination correctly shows the polarity of P and Q. Okay, we said P positive, okay, and Q negative. So the correct answer there should be D. All right, I hope that uh, as you are looking at this, you are reflecting on the answers that you gave and probably it's giving you more clarity in terms of what you want to do, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, obviously what you have done. All right, let's move to the next question. Right, the next question, uh, they say two identical spheres P and Q carry charges Q and minus 2Q respectively. Um, so they say sphere P exerts an electrostatic force of magnitude F uh, on sphere Q. Which one of the following represents the magnitude of the electrostatic force exerted on sphere P um, by sphere Q? Now, please remember, it doesn't matter what, you know, um, the magnitude of the charges are. According to Newton's second, uh, uh, third law, rather, if body A exerts a force on body B, according to Newton 3, then body B will exert an equal but opposite force, regardless of, uh, you know, their size or whatever the case may be, right? So, in this case, um, of course, uh, if... Uh, the force that P exerts on Q is F, then it means that the force that uh, um, Q exerts on P should also be F. So the correct answer there uh, should be B. Okay, right. And then let's go on. They say in 1.8, okay, let me just uh, right, adjust that. It says in the diagram uh, shown below, all the resistors are identical. Ignore the internal resistance of the cell. Okay, so they say which voltmeter will have the highest reading when switch S is closed. All right. Now, if you look at this, of course, we've got resistors in parallel there. Um, if you remember what I said, when whenever you connect resistors in parallel, what it does is that it decreases the effective resistance here. So let's say we put these two resistors as one resistor in parallel. And, uh, sorry, uh, one resistor, right? So in this case, it would mean that that resistor is R over 2, right? A half of R, okay? Because both of these are equal. And then that one would still be R. Now, in this case, remember, it would mean that that half R resistor is now in series with, one, with that resistor uh, R there, right? So in this case, um, remember V, V2, V3, and V4, would have the same magnitude, okay? Uh, because they are all across, and we know that the voltage across resistors in parallel is the same, okay? Uh, so it means that V1 would basically have the highest voltage because remember that resistors in series, okay, which of course, if you combine these two are, um, it would be in series with that one. So whenever we've got resistors in series, they would actually um, uh, divide the potential, or in this case, the voltage uh, proportionally, right? Meaning the bigger the resistor, the bigger the voltage across it. So in this case, it means that V1 would actually be the highest value. So our um, answer for 1.8, that would be A. Okay, right. So hopefully... Uh, I'm sure that as you look at these responses, you are thinking, yay, you know, I got that one right. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. All right, uh, question 1.9, they say, in which one of the following electrical machines is electrical energy converted to mechanical energy? So remember, uh, what does that is a motor, right? Uh, and of course, we don't even need to waste time with that. A, dy a dynamo and a generator are all the same thing. So in this case, uh, the correct answer there will be 1.9. I mean, uh, at 1.9 will actually be uh, D, which is uh, DC motor, right? And then for 1.10, okay, they say which one of the following combinations 
correctly links an emission spectrum and an absorption spectrum to the energy transition of an electron in an atom right so remember that when an atom okay drops down from higher energy to lower energy what we get is an is a line emission spectrum you see it emits a photon okay because energy cannot be created or destroyed so once it transitions from higher to lower it emits you know um, a, a photon energy in the form of a photon so that is when we experience what we call a line emission spectrum so uh, for an emission spectrum we know we are moving from high to low energy levels and of course from absorption spectrum of course it's moving from a ground state or from a lower energy level uh, to a higher energy level uh, in that case it would require energy to do that okay so it means that we are looking at an absorption spectrum okay uh, so uh, let's see the, the from high to low and from uh, low to high okay so it looks like the uh, correct answer there should be D once again okay right uh, and that is how the cookie crumbles when it comes to the multiple choice section I hope that you were able to at least get most of these answers correctly you know how we roll so we are simply going to be looking at each question I'm going to just be giving you one at a time okay uh, uh, obviously until we finish the rest of the question paper all right i hope this doesn't stress you out in any way but uh, what it does is that it at least empowers you in how uh, looking at the questions and seeing how uh, you are able to give those responses okay so i'll see you guys again next time when we look at uh, question two sharp sharp